is a big advocate for. If you are a Posse Scholar, you are very likely and motivated and excited to join in campus life once you get to college. So when I was in college, I was the vice president of my graduating class. I was the communications and marketing chair of the Student Alumni Association. And I ran, I was a dialogue facilitator. So we had facilitated dialogues called the Intergroup Dialogue Facilitation Group. And that was for the Marshall Center for Intercultural Learning. And when I was in college, I studied abroad in Copenhagen, Denmark and South Africa. And I studied political theory and global studies. During my time in college, in the summers primarily, I also interned at Harlem Village Academy as a school operations intern. I interned at Penguin Random House as an editorial intern. And I also worked for a New York City Council campaign where I petitioned in Forest Hills and I did community outreach. So I am also from the Forest Hills area. I graduated from Forest Hills High School and in 2017, that was 2017, I graduated high school and I was, at my time at Forest Hills, I was the captain of the softball team. I was the member of the Academy of Public Service program. And in my time at Forest Hills High School, I was awarded the PCL Louisa Wingate certificate, achieved high English honors. And the courses that I took to prepare myself for college and for really the academic sphere and level that I was embarking in when I went to Wheaton was AP Psych. I took AP English. And one of my favorites was the College Now public speaking class with Queens College that I took. Um, that all said, that prepared me for my experience with Posse. And it really fostered for me personally a passion for college readiness. And I decided to pursue a career in education. I, while I, my undergraduate degree, I majored in political science, and then I got accepted upon graduating into the NYC DOE fellowship. Um, and I am currently teaching seventh grade at MELS. So I teach at the Metropolitan Expeditionary Learning School in Metropolitan. Some of you may or may not either attend there or know people who attend there. And I teach seventh grade. My teaching degree is special education, grades seven to 12, and middle childhood, grades five to nine. So that's a little bit about me. I am very rooted in Forest Hills. I grew up in Woodhaven and I, much like all of you, was really nervous about college and curious, how was I going to pay for it? How was I going to channel all of my excitement into something that was productive and amazing? And that's a little bit about why I am here to talk to you about that today. So what is Posse? So the Posse Foundation identifies, recruits, and trains individuals with leadership potential. The Posse Foundation awards full tuition scholarships for Posse partner schools and universities. So Posse is a foundation that they connect with universities across the country, they connect with colleges, and they award full tuition scholarships based on their belief that these students have extraordinary leadership potential, and they have the potential to change the world be in college and beyond college. So Posse was built upon this concept in 1989 because the founder she was in close connection with a student that she had worked with and her student had dropped out. So in 1989, she had this one student who essentially inspired the whole Posse Foundation to create a foundation that would create a supportive environment for inner city kids in college. So the background story is the student, essentially, they got accepted into their dream university. They went to school. They had all this potential. They were so excited about attending college and they came back and when they met with the founder and talked about their experience and they said they dropped out and the student said this quote here I never would have dropped out if I had my posse with me and it created it sparked this excitement in Deborah the founder of what that could look like for inner city kids specifically in New York City that is where posse started um, and how do we support inner city kids to go to college and be successful and graduate while not feeling ostracized on the campus? So that is what Posse is for. Posse is for 
creating support systems for inner city kids so they can be successful on the college campus and in the world. So your posse not only is a support group for you in college, but college life and mentorship and your career beyond that. So the goal of Posse is essentially to expand the pool for top colleges and universities in the US. So what the benefit is for the schools, because again, Posse is a foundation that partners with colleges and universities. The colleges and universities benefit because Posse becomes an outlet for them to recruit outstanding young leaders from diverse backgrounds. So Posse does all of this work through something that is called the dynamic assessment process, which I'm going to get into in a minute, but it's essentially their vigorous interview process that allows them to screen candidates that have amazing leadership potential, and they connect them with these universities. And by the, the university benefits because now they gain this student body that is showing up to build more interactive campus environments so they can become a more welcoming university for people from all backgrounds and that way they can also benefit from having amazing leaders and students on their campus so the goal of posse is really to ensure that posse scholars persist in their academic studies and graduate so they can take on leadership positions in the workforce so the posse foundation they recruit, they interview, they find these amazing students, they send them into these dynamic interviews, and then they pay for their full tuition. It's a full tuition scholarship. And in return, the universities get to have a fantastic leadership opportunity for their campus. So in the Posse, sphere. And in order to be a Posse Scholar, you have to be nominated. You go through this dynamic assessment process, which all starts with really you. It starts with the student themselves. And it happens when you are a rising senior slash if you just finished your junior year. So this past June, you finished, you are a rising senior. You are in the prime time for Posse at this moment. And especially if you are a junior you're going into your junior year this coming September, you are in the right place because the Posse program is actively looking at you and your experience starting now. So to give you a little bit of an insight into what that looks like before I go into my super detailed explanation of all the different rounds of interviews, I'm gonna share this video here. This was an ABC News coverage based in Posse, New York, which was filmed actually the year that I graduated high school. So in this video, you'll get to see students that I met in the Posse office that actually were interviewed and followed through their experience in the Posse interviews. And you'll get a little closer of an insight as to what that might look like. Just want to make sure I'm going to keep an eye on this chat here. People can hear me. I have people waiting. Ready? Wonderful. Mother, yeah. Should I bring these jars? Yeah, you're going to need them for all the clothes you're bringing. Across the country, the season for both a bittersweet and joyous rite of passage. A disaster she's leaving me behind. 17-year-old Amaya Munoz putting the finishing touches on her last-minute packing before takeoff. I was just looking at baby pictures over there. <laughs> big day. Yeah. Big day. Very big day. Very proud. Meanwhile, across town.
selected, matched to one of Posse's 57 partner universities, some of the best in the country. Jasmine's quest began last fall when she walked through these doors for the first round of interviews. It would mean getting like a support system in college, which is one of the hardest times. Another candidate from the Bronx, Christoph Shakur Larman. Thank you to the person who said they can't hear the video is I adjusted my settings. Can you hear it now at this point? Yes. All right. Thank you so much. All right. What I'll do to make up for the time that we couldn't hear on, I'll just drop it. I'll summarize a little bit. We're following these students in their interview process, and this is beginning right here, which you're about to see, the first round. He's always had to weigh his ambitions with the humble reality. I come from a low-income family, so this scholarship will help me push myself to getting into my double majors for engineering and physics. That's what I really want. I really just want to work, work for NASA. We follow Posse in New York as they narrow down this year's candidates. It involved months of interviews and carefully observed group interactions like this one in an imaginary career at a toy company. This looks correct. So after that, do we have it correct? Posse is finding extraordinarily talented young people, kids who might have been missed by traditional admission screens because maybe they didn't go to a great high school, maybe they didn't have the best test score. There are those who hear that and think, ah, oh, they're watering down. Right. The admissions process. They're right. lowering their standards. You miss so much of a person when you focus solely on test scores and grades. When you look beyond a test score, when you look at the whole person, you see so much that can contribute to an academic environment and a social environment, which college is. We're relying on you. Ninety percent of Posse scholarship recipients graduate college, far above the national average of 53 percent. As the selection process continued in New York, the pressure began mounting. What do you know about round two? It's a one-on-one -on -one interview. Christoph, the NASA hopeful, spends an afternoon prepping with his guidance counselor, and cracks begin Hi. to show. God, uh, so, I hate eye contact. My, I, my eye, like, I know you twitching. struggle, and that's why for, I, I know I told you guys to practice on your own. I think you need to practice with someone. I've never had an interview before. After the next round of interviews, he receives disappointing results. Jasmine and Amaya, classmates at a Bronx high school, have been practicing mock interviews on the weekends. Describe your leadership style. <laughs> no, you can't. For Amaya, an aspiring engineer, her first choice, the University of Wisconsin at Madison, one of the country's top schools for computer science. But then I was thinking, if I don't get posse, would I still really want to go to Wisconsin by myself without, like, I was like, I can't go there if I don't get posse. Three months after starting the process, finalists from around New York set out on their pilgrimage to downtown Manhattan for their last and deciding interview. I've been waiting weeks to finally go to this interview and see how it's going to be. After all this, I still could go home empty-handed. Behind closed doors, the finalist audition for what may be their most important roles yet. Yeah. It was nice seeing you again. It was good seeing you. Bye. Talk to me if you find out anything. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you can say. Later that night, our cameras joined a number of students as they awaited word. Listen, um, we have the two individuals I left behind. There's a t-shirt that had a UW Wisconsin badge on it. Well, the call came. Were you nervous? Were you praying? Were you um, patient? Were... I was ner. We were nervous. She I was, was crying. <laughs> I was kind of just shocked. Like I didn't. I didn't even believe it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Honestly, college is a big responsibility, and I wasn't really able to pay it. So this was basically like an answer to prayers. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so very much. We. <laughs> They're all clapping. <laughs> yeah. Jasmine's win, a culmination of her promise she'd made to her father six years ago. She 
on a whim, just looked at me one day and said, Daddy, don't worry about school. I'm going to get a full scholarship. And I just said, OK, like, I'll believe it when I see it. Right. Yay! And at that point, I don't know if I was walking on cloud nine, but life just changed at that moment. Do <laughs> well. Pretty much with a support group, I think you can do almost anything. So happy, so proud. Jasmine and Amaya, part of a milestone for the Posse Foundation. This year marks a billion dollars in scholarships awarded. Tell me when you get there, please. All right, bye. For Nightline, I'm Byron Pitts in New York. So here I am seeing this question asking about income requirements for the Posse schools. And this is always the first question that ends up coming up. And to be very, very clear, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute, Posse is not a financially based scholarship. It is not income based. It is not a factor in whether or not you receive Posse as a scholarship you can apply for posse and your financial situation is not considered as to whether or not you receive the scholarship. It is solely based on merit and it is solely based on your capabilities and potential as a leader. So the posse partner schools for New York at this point in time are Babson, Brandeis, Connecticut, DePauw, Franklin and Marshall, Lafayette, Lawrence, Middlebury, Smith, Trinity, University of Wisconsin-Madison, Vanderbilt, and Wheaton College. All of these schools are the partner schools for Posse New York. If you are interested at all in any of these universities, Posse is a fantastic opportunity and chance for you to get a full tuition scholarship. And through Posse, you are able to attend with full tuition and have that be covered for you. Now, Posse happens a little differently than the traditional college admissions process because the interview process is referred to as DAP. Now, DAP is the dynamic assessment process. This includes three different rounds of interviews. I'm going to break down every round of interview for you and talk a little bit about what that looks like, some tips and tricks for each round, and how you can get noticed and move for farther along throughout the interview process. Now, the DAP process has proven to be an extremely effective tool for identifying young leaders. This three-part assessment includes a large group interview, an individual interview, and then the final interview happens with the Posse staff and the partner college universities. So to give you a little bit of an overview of what that looks like, the first round is a large group. You'll be in a room with a bunch of people, a bunch of young students from all over the city. The second round is a very small, intimate interview. It's just you with one or two interviewers. And then the last interview is where they will have college representative. So for me, for instance, the president of Wheaton College was at my final interview with about, uh, there's 22 of us exactly in that third interview. So once you get to that third interview, generally speaking, about half of you will receive the full tuition scholarship. Now, the DAP timeline, this is extremely important if you are a junior if you are someone who is looking to get your foot in the door when it comes to colleges, try to explore your options early on, the uh, timeline for this, so the dynamic assessment process, the large group interviews happen around August to September. So they have, they actually have not, they have not started, today's August, they have started. So, because it's August 15th, the first date was August 13th. So first round interviews are currently happening for seniors of uh, this graduating class. So the pre-DAP outreach happens between March, May, June, July of your junior year. So if you are going to be a junior in September, this pre-DAP outreach is the phase for you. 
which means that come the spring semester of your junior year, you should be reaching out to your college advisors at your high school. Whatever high school you attend, if it is a public high school, you are eligible to be nominated for Posse. Now, high schools are the nominators. You must be nominated either through a high school or a public organization. So let's say you attend a private school. That does not necessarily mean you cannot get the Posse scholarship, but you do need to be involved in a public organization. So that would be such as like a YMCA, get involved there, find a representative and someone who can nominate you from that organization and through their nomination, you can also get into that first round interview. There is no application to apply for Posse initially. You must be nominated. So some high schools will have their own process for this. So if you go to your college advisor and they say, well, um, you have to write me a short story so I can know why you want it, then that's their own process and they're allowed to do that. However, there is no formal application for Posse. You must be nominated. If you know someone who is a Posse scholar, they have graduated, they get two nominations for the rest of their lives. That means that once you are Posse, so me, I am a Posse scholar, I have graduated college, I get two nominations every single year, and I can nominate two students for the rest of my life. So if you know someone that is a Posse scholar who has achieved the, a scholarship, now would be the time to reach out for them and ask them for a nomination. Um, then you go into DAP 1, the large group. DAP 2 happens between October and November, which is the individual interviews. So this is where you will need to have a sit-down interview, and you should know what partner school you want to be connected with via Posse by that time. Then DAP 3 happens between December and January. So by the end of your interview in December through January, you will know whether or not you had Posse. Now, because this process happens between the early, early of your senior semester, so between August through December, August through January, this is an early decision process. So you need to commit to the university as early decision. So generally by the latest mid-January, you will know where you are going to college. So scholars can be nominated from a teacher, representative from a public organization, or a Posse alumni. There are a couple of eligibilities that a high school senior must have. So they must be nominated. They must be in their first term of their senior year in high school. So that means you are a rising senior. This is not for people who are already like going into college, this is only, you can only apply for Posse, you can only be a Posse scholar if you go through the interview process in your first term of your senior year. If you demonstrate leadership within your high school community or family circle, if you demonstrate academic potential, and lastly, to apply on time, right? So depending on the Posse City or program, nominations are accepted in the spring and summer before your senior year begins. Now, the Posse Scholarship is neither a minority nor a needs-based scholarship. It's open to students of all backgrounds. The Posse Scholarship is not indicative of your race, ethnic identity. It is not a needs-based scholarship. It is a merit-based scholarship. And you have there's no requirements in order to qualify for Posse other than leadership potential and a willingness to embark on the journey and embody what Posse represents. Now, preparing for the interview. So every Posse nominee should do their research about Posse before their first interview, which generally happens August before your senior year of high school. So if you're already here, that's a really good start because it would be the time to start preparing. Now, keep in mind that when you are preparing, when you are looking up these schools, there are thousands upon thousands of applicants, which means that you should know what it is you want out of Posse and you should know the school that you want to be connected to. Now, every partner school every year, they have 10 students. The goal of Posse is to send 10 students together to college in order to be successful. I'm just making sure we can answer the questions. All right. So, and just for this, um, I'm seeing here, there was a question about 
qualifications for citizenship, that is not a requirement. You do not need to. That's a good question. Okay. So preparing for the interview. So some questions that I always tell students to ask themselves when they're getting ready is what leadership style do you have? Now, I administer, as a teacher, I administer this leadership style questionnaire quite often, but it is a resource that I will link at the end of this presentation that you can answer to yourself and find out what kind of leader you are. And Determine your passions. A lot of times when it comes to posse interviews, they want to know about you. This isn't about checking off a list. It's not about a GPA requirement. It's not about a financial requirement. It's about who you are, right? So you need to know what are your passions? What experiences do you have that align with those passions? That's my biggest tip that I tell students all the time. You can have things that you want to do and be really excited about it, but what have you partaken in? What have you done that actually connects with those things? Right. If you are an adamant reader of what, you know, get involved with an organization that does like reach out for students. How do you show care and support to others? And do you believe in the posse mission statement? Do you believe in the opportunity to be a leader on this campus to support inner city kids and support one another to be successful? So Let's say it is around August or September of your senior year. You are just going back to school. You are getting ready right now, possibly. And you have been nominated you're by a public organization or your high school representative. So congratulations, you've made it to interview round one. So DAP round one is composed of three parts. When you walk into the posse office, which is a picture here, as you can see on the screen, that is what it would look like when you walked in into the New York Posse office on Wall Street, you'll start with your intro. Now, this is going to be something that feels really silly. They might tell you to walk around the room like a squid. They might tell you to jump up and down. They might tell you to do some really what feels like out there things and feels a little silly. So you should be prepared to be out of your comfort zone. Think of it as like the most uncomfortable icebreaker that you might have ever done. Be prepared to do something like that. And the reason for that is they want to see how you react in social situations, right? They are looking to see how you can connect, how comfortable, how much you can push yourself. Um, then you'll go into what is referred to as the Lego building activity. So they saw a snippet of this in the video that I showed. So what essentially this is, is there is a hidden figure behind a wall or behind a you know little paper divider that shows an image and it'll be your group's goal. So you are put into groups of, you know, 10 students where you have to replicate this figure. Now, what this is really assessing is how you communicate, right? DAP round one, they want to see how you interact with other people. Are you someone that speaks up in a group setting? Are you someone who's maybe a little bit more reserved and a little bit more like a background leader, somebody who can guide the group without being the loudest? And I want to say that both are absolutely okay. A lot of times in interview round one, people will think that they have to be the loudest in the room in order to get noticed. And that's not necessarily the case. If you are someone who can support like authentically, like more quietly, that's also really amazing here. And then the interview then gets closed out with a short essay. So if you saw, there was some students in the video with sitting around with clipboards. So you'll sit with a clipboard, you'll get a few prompts, and you'll get to choose the prompt that you want to respond to. So the interview round one is really about seeing your communication style, how you act outside of your comfort zone, and also giving you an opportunity to get really personal. I recommend when it comes to the short essay in round one that you really do pick the prompt that feels closest to you. So for the first round, some of my tips, the biggest one are to make a strong impression that's true to you, right? Be friendly. Don't be afraid to engage with conversations with your peers. Look at them as your peers, not your competition. Yes, it is a little competitive. It might feel that way, but really they want to see you be supportive. They want to see you communicate. So treating it like you want to be standoffish is not the way to go about this interview, right? So you, again, you might be asked to do certain activities that may feel silly. Remember, they are done to help you commit to, and they want to get, the committee wants to get to know you better. Um, be ready to interview a 
um, be ready to write a short story about why you should be selected for a scholar. And additionally, know your GPA, SAT slash ACT scores if you have taken those and your class rank. You'll have to fill out a data sheet when you arrive. And it's really helpful to just know those things off the hand. And lastly, don't mind if people are around taking notes. So you'll see at this round, there will be a bunch of adults walking around the room with clipboards and it might feel a little strange and bizarre, but they're just taking notes on how you communicate. So try to ignore them as much as you can. So that way you can feel a little more comfortable. So let's say it is now right here. I'm seeing some questions here. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna overview these, the rounds, and then I will answer these questions at the end here. So DAP round two, this is where semifinalists will come in and bring a questionnaire that you will have to fill out beforehand, along with an object that you feel represents yourself, a writing sample, your SAT or ACT scores, official transcripts, and a resume. So there's a little bit more paperwork that is required coming into round two. And this is a more intimate setting with you with one or two interviewers. So for me personally, in my experience, I uniquely had two interview interviewees, people that were interviewing me, because um, one of them was training. But generally, it is a one-to-one -one interview that you will sit in. And when you go into round two, this is where you need to know the school that you are, Matt, that you want to be connected with. Based on this interview, you will receive your partner school. They will match you with the school that they feel fits you best. So you should go into this interview knowing your top three and why those schools are your top three and be prepared that it might be your third choice and it should you should feel equally excited with all of your top three choices for the partner schools. Now, because I did see this question, there are more than the possible like the posse partner schools that you see online, yes, there are those, but that is across posse across the country. So for instance, posse Chicago, posse LA, those posse school, those posse partner schools are specific to that state. So all of the schools that I had listed are specific to New York. So as a New York City inner city kid, those are the schools that you can be partnered with, which is determined based on your interview, your DAP round two interview. So some tips for the second round here are to research your top schools thoroughly. The committee will ask you questions and will wanna know why you picked your top three. Um, to dress appropriately, make sure that you come, like they always say, pre come prepared for the job you want, not the job you have. Um, so nothing too crazy, but just come prepared to, like you would for any other job interview. Um, and my biggest tip is when they are asking you why you chose your top three is to link your explanations to your passions. So as they want to know who you are and they want to know why you would be a good fit for Posse. So if you are interested in, let's say, Vanderbilt and they have a phenomenal political science program and they have they're affiliated with an organization that you're really interested in, come prepared with that reason. It's a lot more meaningful to hear that you are looking into schools and looking into things that connect to your passions as opposed to, oh, well, you know, I just, I really like the school. I like this program, right? Finding those more specific details that connect to why they matter to your passions is what makes it feel more authentic, right? Um, and that comes with my, another tip to remember to hold on to your own voice, right? It can be very easy if you are over rehearsed especially if you are rehearsing time and time again for these interviews to sound a little stale, remember that it is about you and who you are. Okay? So, and lastly, to remember to keep calm, avoid looking nervous and think about the extra activities that have meaning to you and your passions in life. The second round is really more about understanding what it is you want to seek out of a college experience. So let's say you make it to round three, you are selected as a finalist, you'll be asked to fill out the application of the school that has been chosen from your top three. So for instance, let's say your top three were Vanderbilt, Wheaton, and DePaul. Let's say you get matched to DePaul. Now you are filling out the application to the school. 
because up until this point, the paperwork has been for the posse organization. So between your second round interview and your third round interview, you will have one meeting with the people at the posse office and you will submit the common application with them. You'll sit there with them, you'll submit your application and it will go directly to the school. Okay. You'll also be asked as a finalist to write a personal statement along with the required documents in the resume. Now, the required documents, a lot of it you had prepared for DAP2, so you'll use those documents, but you will also have additional documents that you will need to submit. But you will have the people at the Posse office support in submitting that. So round three will be another group interview, but a much smaller, more intimate setting. So your group interview is around 21 to 22 students. By attending round three, when you say, I want to attend round three, they will ask you in an email, is this okay? You want to go into this third round. That means that if you say, yes, I would like to go into round three, you are committing to going to the college they match you to. So let's say you go before you know if you get the scholarship, the full, you are committing that, yes, if I, if you, I am awarded the scholarship, I will go to this school. So your round three is like accepting an a, a interview at round three is almost like a uh, early decision if you receive the scholarship. Now the third round is probably it is the most important interview out of all the three. It is also the uh, what feels like might be the most high stakes because you have representatives from Posse, you have representatives from the school. But the biggest tip that I can give to you is to be yourself. Now, the interviewers, the college representatives, they have been doing this for a long time. They are partner schools with Posse that have been 20 plus years. So they can tell when you're not being authentic. And a lot of times I see students that, again, with this seeing peers as competition, not as peers and not as people that could be in your Posse, do not be afraid to talk with the inter interviewees while you are there. Right. Half of them, if you achieve the scholarship, will become your posse. There will be ten, they will be the people that you are going to college with, that you will be participating in meetings once you get to college. So they want to see how you'll be interacting with each other because they want to create a support group that can support each other and feel connected. Okay. Now, and at that third round, it's really important that you aren't afraid to be vulnerable. At that point, they already know you're amazing. You have the posse recruitment folks rooting for you. They have selected you. They have gotten you to this point. That's the wonderful thing about the third round is you aren't in there alone. It may feel like it, but at that point, all of the posse staff that have been interviewing you, that recruited you, that have heard your life story and want to know more and want to support you in your goals and your dreams, they are your biggest cheerleaders at that time. So it's really hard not to be nervous, I will say. It, I, I was a little nervous going into my third round, but it's important to keep your authentic self at the forefront. Otherwise, you don't want to seem disingenuous. Okay. Now, let's say you had your third round interview. It is December or January of your senior year you'll find out very quickly whether or not you got posse. So it's a pretty quick turnaround, which is really useful and really helpful. Um, let's say, congratulations, you became posse scholar. You've gone through this rigorous process. You came out and you will soon begin something that is called PCT. Now, PCT sounds a lot more intimidating than it is, um, but it's called pre-collegiate training. So this requires you to attend meetings once a week with your trainer slash posse in the posse office on Wall Street. So for me, for instance, I would leave school on like, I think my meetings were always on Wednesdays or Thursdays. I would leave school and then I would go to pre-collegiate training from five to seven and I would participate in conversations and activities in college prep stuff. They helped me perfect a resume and other like career readiness type of training before I went into college during that time. So it is really not so bad. It's a good time. Sometimes it gets a little bit of a bad rep because people are like, oh, I have to go to these meetings. And yes, but at the same time, they are fun. You get to connect with your posse and it also helps build your support group before you get to college. So you'll get familiar with your posse in those meetings. 
Now, once you are a Posse Scholar and you've been awarded this full tuition scholarship, congratulations, it's amazing opportunity. It is a great honor to be a Posse Scholar. That also comes with some responsibilities. So once you get to campus, you will meet weekly with your Posse in the first two years of college. So you will meet your Posse and your Posse mentor once a week for the first two years. So you get a Posse mentor on your college campus. Now, this is someone who is a professor. It is someone who works at the university that you attend. For me, for example, my Posse mentor was a professor of biology and geology, and he was incredible. He was an amazing mentor, somebody that I got to meet with personally every two weeks. So you have your once a week meeting with your posse, and then you have your once every two week meeting with your mentor, and that's a one-on-one -on -one meeting. So you'll have your group and you'll have your one-on-one, -on -one, and it's really just a space for you to be able to like talk about what's going on in college. It's a really big time, a lot of changes happen and be able to support each other in things that you may be struggling with. College is not always easy and that's what Posse is for. So it's not just about getting the scholarship, but it's also about making sure that you can succeed in college and re receive the resources that you need and make sure that you're checking in and actually have a, not just a Posse of 10 students, but also a mentor, someone who works at the university that deeply cares about your success and deeply cares about you as a person. And those connections will last a lifetime. So, and you'll meet with them with your posse once a week and then your posse mentor once every two weeks for the first two years. So it's only freshman and sophomore year. And then after that, you don't have any more meetings and you can hang out with your posse socially if you want to. You never have to see them again. Um, most people will hang out and you build a bond and they become really good friends. So but your commitment to meetings ends at the end of your sophomore year of college. All right. Now we have some time here. I saw some questions. I am going, I'm gonna continue sharing, but I wanna make sure that I address some of these. So here, um, New York students can only apply to the list you posted. Website Homer Schools, yes, so. Um, I touched upon this already, but the partner schools for New York are specific to the state. So the partner schools are these listed here. These are the schools that you are able to apply to for Posse New York students. Um, how do grades and test scores play a role in acceptance? So your grades and test scores, it's not that they, I'm not going to say they don't matter because that is not true. However, your Posse grades and test scores, so let's say your GPA, while you don't want to be on like a below a 2.0, technically, they are looking at your overall portfolio. I would generally say for your grades, as long as you are above a really a 2.8, you are in the clear when it comes to your scores. As far as that's for your GPA. As far as SAT, ACT scores, they are also not required for Posse. So for me personally, I know that I took the SAT, I took the ACT, I scored higher on the SAT. And when I went to sit down after my second round interview with the uh, my, um, my Posse person, my Posse interviewer, they were like, well, we don't really recommend submitting test scores. So I actually never submitted my SAT score, even though I had a pretty good score. So it doesn't really play a role as far as Posse goes. Um, what is the purpose of the game slash challenges that occur in the small groups? So assuming you are referring to the interviews, this is about them seeing how you communicate and how you interact in a group setting. They really want to see how you can handle potentially confrontation and potentially handling being uncomfortable. Um, and confirming private independent school is not eligible. That is a fact. However, that does not mean that you cannot attend a posse, like you cannot achieve the posse scholarship. You just need to be involved in a public organization that has a, what, like a administrator, someone that's running that organization to nominate you. So for instance, I had my, one of my posse sisters, she went to private school 
but she was involved in her local YMCA and her the teacher that taught like the class that she was TAing at the YMCA nominated her. There are only 10 minutes you have to select three. So as far as catering to your interests, if you have two schools that are on that list that feel really special to you and you're like, those are the ones that work, you know you want to major engineering, you can keep those as your top two. Your top, your third choice I would recommend picking a school that has like an engineering as a major that looks compelling. Um, if that's the case and you're like, no, this is what I want. It's okay to go in with two. Just know that if you walk in with no flexibility in other elements, that might be interpreted as potentially not wanting to partner with another school. So I, you can go in and say, I want these top two. It could just potentially limit your opportunity for partnership schools. I'm going to keep this chat open here. It's commitment to PCT. Okay, yeah. So commitments to PCT in the spring. So this would be pre-collegiate training the spring of your senior year, it's once a week, one day. And for my posse, it was five to seven. So depending sometimes if there's like external circumstances, they'll adjust the meeting of your time, depending on the posse. It might be four to six. And mine was personally five to seven. And depending on the meeting, five to 7.30. But I was never at the posse office beyond 7.30. And the website, yes. So I'm going to link this in the chat here. I have them here. This is the Posse website. I also, I'll link the video that I- Everyone deserves the fastest, most- That showed the interview process. So you can look at those as well. Yes, thank you for that. Um, there are organizations that are Posse nomination eligible. You can find those as well on the like About Posse website. That was just one example. As the as I'll answer more questions if there are more questions that are coming in, I just wanted to say I appreciate you all coming on here today to hop on to hear about the program. I'm happy to answer questions and to have conversations further if there's other things that are interesting you or things that maybe I didn't touch on. But thank you very much. Um, we have a few minutes here, so if there's more questions, I'll answer them as well. Okay. Um, how many students do they take from New York City group a year? So there they take 10 students for every partnership school. So if I'll pull up the partnership school again, there, so for Babson, for instance, 10. So if you multiply 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 130 students because they send them in the posse group. So it's only one posse per partnership college slash university every year. So it is a large pool, but with a lot of preparation, with passion, it, um, it's possible you can get the scholarship. You just have to be prepared to commit to the process and be authentically yourselves. It is, you'll have thousands of applicants. It's about 130 students, but it is well beyond worth it. These are really great questions. We have a, a, uh, one more minute. If there's any last minute questions, I'm happy to answer them before I close it out. Thank you all. I appreciate your attention.
All right, wonderful. So we have reached the end of our webinar. It looks like there aren't any more questions. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to send an email. I will drop my email here into the chat. Feel free to reach out to me. Um, I know Francis is always available for additional questions, but if there are no further questions, you all can have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for being here and I wish you all the very best of luck.